What's going on there, folks? Good, good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on this Saturday night, uh, almost Sunday morning, November fourth, two thousand twenty-three. Uh, it is almost about uh, midnight here across the uh, California area. Uh, seeing some movement out here across the North American Plate inland. Quite the swarming going on here across the area of Western Texas. Uh, I did see uh, include a, a 4.0 coming in here. I think this originally came in as a 4.3, um, along with another four pointer in this area. Looks like a 4.2 from earlier this afternoon. So things are really rocking and rolling out here across the North American plate. And of course, as you can see, look at all those checkered marks out here. Look at all these ponds out here. These are not swimming pools out there in the area of Texas. Uh, you know, for all the hard-working oil folks to jump in after a hard day's work, right? These are massive oil fields getting hit under pressure out here across the North American plate. So uh, we need to watch areas across the plate boundary, uh, more specifically across the West Coast right now, because we have seen an elevated movement out here across Southern California here in the last few hours, along with the subsequent activity here in Texas. I think things are really ramping up out here far as that tension goes across the california area let's go ahead and jump into it here and see what we got uh, some movement outside of el centro including a 3.5 near imperial earlier this evening uh, about 12 kilometers deep that is just off of the uh, southern very southern end of the san jacinto fault zone near the superstition mountain uh, section it looks like most of the activity has been secondary uh, from the plate boundary secondary meaning that these are uh, earthquakes occurring on these fault systems back prior to the plate boundary here and there's been a, a definitely a good uptick here today across the area of Southern California Ridgecrest area as well uh, into the area around the Bay region most of the activity there south of San Jose on the San Andreas fault now uh, you know these little quakes are not that big right nothing big a lot of folks like to uh, downplay some fours and threes out here but Got to pay attention to where they're happening at and what's going on inland away from the plate boundary. That gives us a good indicator of how much pressure and strain is building up at the moment across these areas. And I think right now things are really uh, kicking up here across the West Coast. I think we need to be on guard uh, for some further movement. Uh, also areas up here in the volcanic field, the Cobb Mountain area, Clear Lake Volcanic Field, seeing 31 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. These are hydrothermal operations out here. And there's uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity out there occurring today within that region. Up in the Pacific Northwest, typical movement. No major changes there across the volcanoes. Um, Yellowstone National Park doesn't show a lot of activity, but um, I, I always feel like when I miss it, when I skip it, that's when we're seeing the swarming. But it uh, looks like there's not a whole lot of activity currently taking place here across the region for now. Um see what we got got going on here for hawaii now most of the activity has been stirred up here across the mauna loa area here in the last couple days uh I, I think there's definitely been a big influx here of magma uh below the lithosphere area uh and in terms more directly uh, around this hot spot area where the magma tends to flow up to the surface through um the pacific plate uh, and, and I say that because we've seen quite the influx here, intrusion of magma around the Kilauea volcano. We're also seeing the magma around the Pahala area, uh, typical swarming going on. And more recently, activity here across the uh, Mauna Loa region. There's the uh, last seven days of earthquake activity. This, this movement here occurring yesterday. Uh, so we had about 33 earthquakes or so. In a uh, very quick uh, secession type of event, it hasn't, uh, I don't think it's triggered anything there with the HVO. Let me double check that and see what we got. Kilauea daily update here shows that the volcano is currently not erupting. That's Kilauea volcano. They don't mention anything about the Mauna Loa earthquake activity. Uh, the summit tilt meter there located northwest of the caldera remains stable and measured nearly no deformation over the last 24 hours. So that's their wording but let's double check that wording make sure that we have access to this publicly uh, accessible information here and uh, I'm gonna check out the uh, 
tilt meter stations out here. Not that one. UWE is the tilt meter. Looks like we're starting to spike back up here, doing a little stair step event here over the last two days. Now, the past 30 days here shows that we've leveled out. Now, I'm not for sure if this is going to level down and continue to go down. If that is the case, then that means that magma is no longer intruding underneath this area of the big island of Hawaii. Now, it can sit down there for quite some time uh, without breaking through to the surface. It, it's happened before. Um, so it's something we'll have to watch here in terms of earthquake activity and uh, tilt meter uh, monitoring. I think before it does break to the surface, we'll see a huge influx of earthquake activity here across the Kilauea volcano, but we're not seeing that right now. So things are just, they're mellowing out for now. Uh, earthquake activity here across the Tonga Trench. Some deeper movement quakes once again. Uh, but we are seeing some shallow earthquake activity. And as, you've, as you watch these deeper movement quakes trigger here across the Tonga Trench, the shallower stress builds across this plate boundary. And this is no exception here. 4.5 4 in the Loyalty Islands area, 10 kilometers deep. We'll continue to watch for some shallower movement here across the area as we have seen quite a bit of deep scale movement there in the Tonga Trench here recently. Uh, look at the Earthquake 3D globe here, showing some recent activity. Uh, some smaller quake activity there across the Kermadec Trench. Uh, deeper movement quakes, it looks like, there across the Indonesia Islands area. Very minimal movement up here in Japan. Got a 4.6 and a 3.7. Uh, we'll continue to watch these areas, though. Iceland. Definitely got a huge swarm going on here within the last couple hours or so. Uh, the latest informational statement here still shows that the uh, Rick Jane's area of the area of Iceland uh, is not in eruptive stage yet. Still sitting at yellow. Uh, what's, once this thing does kick up here, uh, then we'll see some uh, some changes going on to the um, the warnings and whatnot. But uh, definitely seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity here. And um, just kind of watching that. I mean, this activity stirred up here in the last couple of hours with quite a few threes and fours uh, kicking up there in that discrete area of Iceland uh, along the Rec Jane's Ridge area. So we'll continue to watch that for some impending eruption here soon. Definitely soon, I think. Uh, Alaska activity. It looks like a little bit of heightened movement here across the areas around the Cook Inlet area and more specifically uh, looks like around these mountain ranges here quite a few uh, smaller quakes in the last couple hours uh, space weather is kind of our main event right now let's go ahead and check this out uh, see what's going on here for space weather activity now not in terms of flaring but in terms of aurora activity we're forecasting here a G2 class storm that could bring auroras down into the northern tier states the detailed forecast here time frame shows roughly, at least for the G2, cla uh, G2 class storm, between 0 and 600 November 6 time frame. So right now we are currently at um, a 0 0.5. So 0 0.6 is going to be roughly tomorrow night, right? Um, let me go back over here. Uh, tomorrow night time frame. So right about now and previous hours here, we should be seeing the uptick here of uh, uh, the G2 class storming. So technically when it's dark tomorrow for Sunday, which is now Sunday, I, I know it's a late update. I hate doing these late updates, but I had to get one in. Uh, so later tonight, Sunday night, as soon as it gets dark, look towards the uh, northern sky. Uh, for some possible storming going on. G2 class storm is forecasted for the beautiful planet that we're living on. As far as any uh, major flaring going on, um, we'll get to that here in a second. We do have a coronal, ma or a coronal hole that is currently facing the Earth. Uh, this could amplify conditions here in the next couple days along with the current uh, space weather activity. Now the latest magnetogram imagery, imagery <laughs> Almost made a new word right there. Shows a split of this area right here. The sunspot region is separating. So I don't think this is going to show any further complexity. That has been demolished, so to speak. So that is off the chart for terms of flaring. 
Uh, we do have this regional sunspot here that does show quite a bit of complexity. But uh, I'm not keeping my hopes up. Right now, the overall threat here shows 90% chance of C flare activity, 25 for the M flare and X flare, around 5% chance or so. Uh, but uh, yeah, tonight, later tonight, Sunday night, look for the auroras. Uh, we're not really expecting any huge event, you know, down into like Texas or California. But watch for the northern tier states here. We could see that uh, activity amplify um, in terms of uh, seeing the auroras there. So, all right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Um, have a good night. Again, we do have quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up across some unusual areas. Now, I know these oil fields get hit often, but, uh, you know, these larger events here gives us a good indicator that there's definitely some stress out here against the West Ameri or the uh, North American plate. And these oil fields where there's thousands upon thousands of damage to the surface out here, well, the pressure is the pressure at the surface areas and below the lith the lithosphere area here is uh, always under pressure, always under pressure. So these earthquakes are no surprise. The further that the pressure accumulates out here on the North American plate, the larger these earthquakes are going to happen. They're, the larger they're going to be, unless we get some release out here across the west coast. We did see a little bit of it over here tonight. But uh, I would definitely be on guard out here for the West Coast area. Seeing some, uh, maybe some larger scale movement taking place out here. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Uh, enjoy your Sunday morning, Saturday night, whatever it is right now. We'll catch you guys a little bit later here in a few hours with the uh, early Sunday morning update. Take care, folks.